This is a Fox News alert. I'm Ashley Strohmeyer live in New York. Iranian state media is reporting there are, quote, no signs of life seen at the crash site of the helicopter that was carrying President Ibrahim Rasisi and others. News of Rasisi's death comes nearly 15 hours after the helicopter crashed in a remote part of the country during dense fog. Rescue efforts have been hampered by bad weather and tough terrain. A number of other top officials, including the country's foreign minister, were also on board. The chopper was heading back to the country's capital when it reportedly went down. The crash comes at a fraught moment in the Middle East with the war raging in Gaza. And weeks after, Iran launched a drone and missile attack on Israel in response to a deadly strike on its diplomatic compounds in Damascus. Hardliner Rasisi became president in a historically uncompetitive election in 2021. Previously, the chief justice... He has overseen a period of intensified repression of dissent in a nation convulsed by youth-led protests against clerical rule. Again, if you are just now joining us, Iranian state media is reporting there are no signs of life seen at the crash site of a helicopter that was carrying President Ibrahim Rasisi and others. News comes nearly 15 hours after that chopper was first to be reported Crashed. And of course, stay with Fox News Channel as we learn more about this breaking news story. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else. We have breaking news. Iranian state television says there is no sign of life at the crash site of a helicopter that was carrying the country's president, Ibrahim Raisi. The aircraft carrying Iran's president and other senior officials went down in a mountainous part of northwestern Iran. The group was returning from an event along Iran's border with Azerbaijan. Here's a look at some welcome back to live now from Fox. And once again, we do want to show you some video from the Iranian border with Azerbaijan as the search is now underway following a helicopter crash. The helicopter carrying the Iranian president as well as his foreign minister and other officials. And again, we are continuing to follow this. Uh, an official saying that both the lives of the Iranian president and his foreign minister Minister were, quote, at risk following the helicopter crash, saying, quote, we are still hopeful, but information coming from the crash site is very concerning. Uh, we do want to bring in Michael Zantos, who is a foreign policy expert, to talk more about this breaking news. And Michael, thank you so much for joining us. You're very welcome. And again, information is still very scarce as this is a breaking news situation. But what can you share with us? Well, it is obviously clearly in doubt whether the Iranian president and the foreign minister is still alive. And it's very easy to dismiss it because it's often pointed out that the power is really in the hands of the supreme leader of Iran, Khamenei, and the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and other security forces. But he was being groomed as a possible successor for the Supreme Leader of Iran, that is the ultimate leader of Iran, who is 85, and not necessarily in good health. And so there's a variety of potential effects of this, but one of them being that he was a possible successor to the current Supreme Leader of Iran. So uh, again, details are very scarce and we were hearing from an anonymous official saying that uh, the uh, president's life was uh, at risk along with the foreign minister, uh, but not uh, going beyond that. If it were the case that uh, the Iranian president was killed in this helicopter crash, what would the impact of that be? I think it could actually be significant in some less than obvious ways. He was in himself a very much a hardliner. So you see the hardliners, the extreme hardliners in Iran, unfortunately, consolidating power. But especially in a government that tries to take the name of God and say that, it, that it's divine wishes that they're acting on and, and that they're serving um, God behind it, I think this is discrediting because even in a government that is not extremely religious and fanatic, um, when you can't protect your leaders, it can happen, unfortunately, and it's scary to the best country, God forbid, even ours. 
that um, you know people do die in plane and helicopter crashes. But it could be seen by the running people as one more sign of incompetence. It doesn't exactly go along with them always saying that God is on their side and that the U.S. and Israel are infidel. So I think it is actually discrediting. It might sound a little bit silly to say, but they are constantly and only speaking in religion. Their leadership only claims legitimacy, it sounds bizarre in today's world, 21st century, based on religion alone. And they claim that they will win because of their religious beliefs and that the United States and the West is evil. So I think it's discrediting. And and in the less kind of uh, theoretical concept, it, it doesn't reflect the competence of this country, this government, I mean, the system that is running out of water. It is can't keep things cool as they have hotter and hotter summers. They barely have electricity. They're one of the largest producers of oil and natural gas. And the average Iranian can't afford gasoline and is struggling to buy food for his or her family. So I think this crash is, is discrediting and makes people, the doubts in this regime grow within the country. Tonight, President Biden has been briefed on the apparent crash of a helicopter carrying Iran's president near the border with Azerbaijan. For the latest on this developing story, we turn now to CBS's Ian Lee. Good evening, Nancy. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi's helicopter went down in the northwest of the country. It was part of a convoy of three helicopters when it made what officials describe as a hard landing. Iranian state TV showed rescue crews working in heavy fog. Visibility in some places is less than 20 feet. The helicopter went down in a mountainous region. Iran's foreign minister was also traveling with the president at the time. Both are missing. They had been visiting a dam project earlier in the day. Now, Raisi is an extremely divisive president. He was elected in the lowest turnout in the country's history. He's a conservative hardliner who's overseen a violent crackdown on dissent. Raisi is also very close to the Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei, and many view him as possibly his successor. Now, the crash is currently being described as an accident. So far, there isn't any talk of foul play. And Nancy, tonight, the Supreme Leader is calling on the nation to pray for Raisi while adding that the government will carry on functioning as usual. Ian Lee, thank you. We are following breaking news coming from our content partners over at the Associated Press. We're learning a helicopter carrying the Iranian president has suffered a, quote, hard landing on this Sunday. Iranian state media reporting without immediately elaborating. We're told the president was traveling in Iran's East Azerbaijan province. State TV saying the incident happened near a city on the border with the nation of Azerbaijan, some 600 kilometers kilometers northwest of the Iranian capital of Tehran. We're told traveling with the president were Iran's foreign minister, the governor of Iran's East Azerbaijan province, and other officials. Now, one local government official used the word crash to describe the incident, but he acknowledged to an Iranian newspaper that he had yet to reach the site himself. No word yet on anyone's condition aboard that helicopter. We're told rescuers were attempting to reach the site, but had been hampered by poor weather conditions. We're told there had been heavy rain and fog reported with some wind in that area. Now, the Iranian president had been in Azerbaijan early this Sunday to inaugurate a dam with Azerbaijan's president. The dam is the third one that the two nations built along a river. The visit coming despite chilling relations between the two nations, including over a gun attack on Azerbaijan's embassy in Tehran back in 2023 in Azerbaijan's demo diplomatic relations with Israel, which Iran's Shiite theocracy views as its main enemy in the region. Iran flies a variety of helicopters in the country, but international sanctions make it difficult to obtain parts for them. Its military air fleet also largely dates back to before the 1979 Islamic Revolution.
We're told the president of Iran at 63 years old is a hardliner who formerly led the country's judiciary. He's viewed as a protege of Iran's supreme leader, and some analysts have suggested he could replace the 85-year-old leader after his death or resignation from the role. Again, now at 935 on the East Coast, we are following this breaking news. The helicopter carrying Iran's president has suffered a hard landing. As we get more details, you'll be the first to know right here on Live Now from Fox.